So I will argue for optimal sequencing of first-line treatment in metastatic colorectal cancer. Do I just push up here? Or? It's actually uh, here. Sorry. I'm sorry. I, I kept oh. here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to stump me already, <laughs> but I will not let them. Um, so when we look at the NCCN guidelines for first-line treatment and subsequent treatment, they're very comprehensive, and as, as you all know, there are multiple choices from Folfax alone to Capox, Capecitabine and Oxaliplatin, with or without Bevacizumab, or with anti-EGFR therapy in RAS wild-type patients. And then there's a second page where we can choose Fulfiri with or without um, bevacizumab or cetuximab or panitumumab in first-line therapy. And then sub subsequent therapies, of course, are guided by the, um, our initial first choice. So although NCCN guidelines really allow us to choose whichever regimen um, we feel uh, is correct, I do believe that there is an appropriate sequencing. Um, but first, let's look at the data and see why guidelines are so broad in, in choosing which, which treatment is best. And this is because the treatments are equivalent. So looking at Fulfiri and Fulfox as first line, equivalent um, CR rates, equ equivalent time to um, progression, and equivalent to overall survival. Uh, really no statistical difference between the two. Looking further at Fulfox or Capox, so with Capecitabine, again, superimposable curves with regard to progression-free survival in the first line setting. And likewise, with the addition of bevacizumab to either Fulfox or Capox, no difference, no meaningful difference in um, progression-free survival. And just looking at this a little bit further, um, with uh, Capox and Fulfox again, with different subgroups, no meaningful difference between the two. And in overall survival, likewise equivalent. So really no difference, Fulfox, Capox, uh, and bevacizumab. And this is just another graph showing the same thing, equivalent responses um, between the, all the groups. So if there's no difference in efficacy, then why does it make a difference which treatment we choose? This is a photo of my nurse, um, who is a, colon, a, a cancer survivor. Um, I think it's pretty evident which side of his face uh, is while he was on chemotherapy and which side is now. Um, and he made this himself to remind himself and to speak to our patients and think about this always because quality of life on chemotherapy really does make a difference. And of course there is a difference if the treatment is curative where one can endure losing their hair, uh, feeling extremely ill for a period of time if the end goal is cure. If the end goal is palliative in terms of, of course, prolonging life, but also improving the quality of life, then really quality of life should be of utmost importance, especially if the regimens are equivalent. And we, we know that physicians do pay attention to this because patients don't want to look like they're on chemo. They don't want to lose their hair. Irinotecan makes you lose your hair. Um, they, they don't want to have diarrhea, which limits their quality of life. That is much more the case with irinotecan than with oxaliplatin. And a large majority of patients do get full fox as first line in the United States. And this was evidenced initially with marketing, but also more recently in the breakdown um, of a recent study, 80405, where the first line regimen was dealer's choice. So physicians chose either full fox or full theory, and three fourths of, of the physicians chose full fox first. And I do believe that this is largely due to quality of life. Of course, neuropathy is not trivial, which is secondary to oxaliplatin, but unless there is a really specific reason uh, for a patient to be wary of neuropathy, for example, if they are a concert violinist or really need dexterity to maintain their quality of life or their work while on chemotherapy, um, we know from the Optimox data that, that patients where oxaliplatin stopped early have significantly less toxicity and, and uh, equivalent outcomes. Moving on to bevacizumab, bevacizumab is not uh, without uh, associated toxicities. However, these are usually not manifest in, in how the patients feel or how they look, uh, which is when for speaking to them of, of uh, utmost importance. So hypertension, GI perforation, uh, arterial thrombotic events, wound healing, um, and renal uh, albuminuria. So what about adding anti-EGFR in the frontline setting? Of course, in RAS wild-type patients. Well, this is one of the 
main side effects of anti-EGFR agents, as you all know. It is also non-trivial. Patients certainly look like they are on something. They look different. Um, I've had patients tell me that their children are afraid of them. They don't want to go out. They don't want to work. Um, and this is not, this is a big deal for someone who is facing two years of life to not be able to interact with their loved ones or to lead their life. Looking at first-line therapy of, uh, with anti, an anti-EGFR inhibitor, so the CRYSTAL trial, Fulfiri plus Cetuximab, there was an improvement in progression-free survival as well as response rate with the addition of Cetuximab. Um, and you can see this here uh, with the PFS graph. So this was Fulfiri plus Cetuximab or Fulfiri alone, an improvement in PFS. Um, and an overall survival as well in the KRS wild type patients, which are in the left uh, uh, graph. More recently, the 80405 study, which I uh, mentioned earlier, also evaluated biologics or cetuximab and bevacizumab in frontline, uh, first-line chemotherapy. So dealer's choice, full fox, full theory, with then randomized then to either cetuximab or bevacizumab. And the primary endpoint was overall survival. Over a thousand patients were treated. And here, the patients with either chemotherapy backbone plus either bevacizumab or cetuximab had equivalent outcomes with regard to PFS, just over 10 months, no statistical difference. Um, and likewise, there was no statistical difference in overall survival, choosing either regimen with either biologic agent. And uh, this is overall survival, looking at just full FOX alone. Um, really not a statistical significance in, in overall survival, and likewise in the Fulfiri group. But toxicities were different. Um, the uh, anti-EGFR group did have a higher incidence of rash, um, as well as higher incidence of diarrhea, secondary to um, cetuximab. And importantly, quality of life data showed a, a significant difference in, in, in satisfaction uh, with regard to rash. So the patients that were on anti-EGFR therapy clearly described a, a decrease in quality of life while receiving that treatment. So when would I recommend using uh, anti-EGFR therapy? I think it's appropriate in the third line. And the reason being is that we do have data supporting uh, the use of single agent cetuximab in the third line setting, so after progression on full FOX and full theory, where there was an improvement in um, overall survival of 4.5 months. Um, so you can gain the survival benefit even when using this agent third line. And why not first line again, just to, to reiterate the point of the skin rash, the, the better the, the Worse the skin rash, the better the response to anti-EGFR therapy. So the patients on the CRYSTAL study who had the worst skin rash, grade 3 skin rash, had a much better progression-free survival than the patients who had um, less of a, of a rash or no rash at all. In fact, the patients who had no rash at all actually did worse than the control group that received full theory alone. So in my opinion, first-line therapy for metastatic colorectal cancer should begin with full FOX, with or without bevacizumab because in the first-line treatment, Fulfiri and Fulfox are, are equivalent. It's about quality and quantity, but quality of life really does matter. Thank you.